going YouTube Gozi here and welcome back to the channel thank you for tuning in and let's begin so the last video I posted I was pretty much gearing up to start the car I was uh, waiting for the bell uh, and was buttoning up some other stuff so we finally got through that the bell arrived we threw that in started the car And right off the bat, it was a rough go at it. The car didn't want to start, it didn't want to idle, didn't want to stay on. So shut it back down, troubleshot, couldn't really figure out the issue. Turn it back on, had to pedal it for it to stay on. I let it idle for a little bit. Right, and with the car running, I tried to cycle through the gears and I was locked out of every gear. All right, so did some further digging and I realized that the clutch wasn't fully disengaging and I knew what that meant. So imagine spending a couple weeks throwing this engine in just to have to drop the rest of the drivetrain, the transmission, the differential, the rear suspension. It was tough. I found out the hard way what nobody teaches you in school, the school that I didn't go to. And that is sometimes with these aftermarket cranks, they're spec different. So when you go to throw on the flywheel, pressure plate, uh, clutch assembly, things are not where they once were. So it was a complete oversight on my part. I tried to assemble it how I took it off and no go. So I had to shim the slave and back in action. All right, so threw everything back on and boom, good to go. We had our gears, the car was able to move, but the troubleshooting still was not over. So let me move inside because it's raining and I'm not sure if you guys can hear me. All right, so with the car running, it sounded like it was missing really, really bad. But the problem was, it was hard trying to decipher what was normal and what wasn't, okay? So it went from a 427 factory block to a 441 stroker. So I'm, so I'm just like, is this normal? Because, you know, on top of that, I knew that, okay, the block needs to be broken in. The uh, rings aren't sealing properly just yet. I had, like, no vacuum. So I'm just like, okay, maybe it's normal. So I let it run for a little bit. I was messing with the spark plugs, the, I mean, I was messing with the coil packs, trying to make sure that, you know, like, those were, you know, plugged in properly, you know, doing the troubleshooting, and, I'm, and I just could not figure it out. And I'm not going to lie, it was a hard two weeks uh, worth of troubleshooting, trying to balance the car with school, with work. I was, I was losing sleep, pulling my hair out, trying to figure this out, and honestly, a little bit of self-doubt kind of crept in. I'm just like, maybe I'm, I'm not as good as I think I am. Maybe I, I need to just take it to a dealership or take it to a tuner because this is beyond me. So busted the mossy tool out, started chasing my grounds, chasing the leads, ch chasing resistance, ohms, all that good stuff. And then I came across my uh, spark plug uh, wiring harness and with the, with the ignition on, I had no power to them. So while running through the coil pack wiring harness, I ended up popping the fuse for uh, bank one driver side injectors and that sent me back to the drawing board. And then with further troubleshooting, I was able to isolate the short inside of the uh, coil pack uh, wiring harness. I was able to isolate the short inside the uh, coil pack wiring harness itself. So disconnected it from here replaced it, hasn't popped the fuse, and I have my 12 volts uh, reading from each individual uh, harness connector. So I think we should be good to go. I haven't started the car yet since then because I wanted to get this on video for you guys. And this should be the official smooth running zero issue start that I am gonna have. All right, so I've talked a lot. And I just want to just get to it because honestly, I can't wait to hear it. And I know you guys can't wait to hear it either. All right, but before we get it started, I did drain the battery during the compression test. So I had it on a trickle charger to try to juice it back up. I'm gonna take that out. Ugh. All right, and like I said, guys, this is gonna be our official first start without any shorts, any, any misfiring, any problems, so. All right, I did adjust the tune because we ended up flushing out the E85. Currently siphoning out the E85 because we'll be doing our break-in with 93. And replaced it with 93 pump gas, dialed some of that fueling back.
one more thing I forgot to mention. So this is actually my second set of uh, Pro Charger belt. So the first one, I chewed it right up, literally up on startup, and ended up having to shim it right here. As you can see, I got two washers right there to shim it. And so far, so good. Let's see what it does at the high RPMs. This ain't for the fan at heart, but it's that satisfaction at the end of it that makes it uh, worth it. There was a couple times that I definitely wanted to give up and then just make it somebody else's problem, but I just had to just push through. So as soon as the range dries up, we'll take it for a spin, start data logging. I have done the first oil change as well, by the way. Replace the filter. Oil didn't look too bad, it was kind of shiny. But I guess that's to be expected. That just uh, the weird metals and all that other uh, good stuff from the uh, from the fresh block. So probably gonna be doing another oil change here soon, and then data log. Keep tuning it and slowly but surely get it get it race ready. I'm really trying not to disappoint here. Trying to keep you guys, you know, actively in the loop and you know everything. It's just tough, man. It's just tough when you gotta do, you know you gotta just do what you gotta do and troubleshoot and try to knock it out, you know keep the ball rolling. Appreciate y'all and I will see y'all on the next video.